Hey everybody, it's uh, Mark Rajur here, Clark Commando 1983. We got you uh, excitement, got Battle of the Bolds set up here. Avalon Hill, Battle of Bolds 81. Did a little quick uh, intro video that I already posted. This will be um, officially video number one. Let's adjust my camera here a little bit. And what I'm going to try to cover here is just some of the basics, and then I'll walk through a turn maybe in the next video. Um, I just kind of went over general discussion. I wanted to try to make this a little more high energy. It's uh, September 26, 2023. The cancer fight goes on. And right now my swollen feet are fucking killing me. So sorry about the cussing about that. I shouldn't do that. So what I wanted to do is go over a little bit of the basics. I haven't played this game since high school. I say I'm 58 years old now. So 40 years ago plus. Um, thanks to the kindness of the constant marketplace on Facebook. I got the erratic counters coming on the way. Uh, we'll see how far I get. I'm going to pretend to play this, and play will be far from ideal. Try to explain the rules. I want to go over a little bit uh, what rules I'm using and scale. So let's talk about scale first. And you would think I would have looked this up before I started. It's but we're basically the combat units are regimental scale. The map itself. This is a vast improvement, in my opinion, over the 65 edition. It is, let's see here. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, sorry. It's like two, in the, well, no, it's about one in the morning and then here, so. Well, anyways, all right. Well, scale, the unit scale is regiments and I'll look it up and correct myself in the next video. Apologize for that. I'm using the basic rules, which I'm not going to go over. Uh, if you're a war gamer, um, you know, you're going to be familiar with the basics, movement, combat, zone of control. Now, there is some unique, um, there is some unique uh, c combat results, which I'll cover when I actually get to combat. Um, when it, well, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll cover that. Well, shoot, should I cover it now? <coughs> I don't know about unique, but the stuff that was introduced in 65, like contact, exchanges, engage. I think I'll go over each type of result in, uh, when I get to my video about combat. This is a whole sequence about counterattacking from an engaged result. Withdrawal, which are meant units can withdraw. So advanced uh, advanced rules are using that to so introduce this first turn surprise. So some of the first turn surprise are the Germans can't use road movement at all. Normally it's one third for Mac and uh, or one quarter. Is it one quarter for Mac? That's what. Might be one quarter for Mac and one third for infantry. And I'll show you the turn record chart here in a minute. So movement. Uh, let's see. Road movement. Infantry one-third or half. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Uh, that's German infantry is one-third or half. There's a note. Reduced movement rate used only if units begin or end this movement enemy Zoc. So if you don't, you're third and you have. But turn one, it's one movement point for the Germans. Allies, infantry is a quarter movement point or a third. German core artillery is quarter or thirded. E, note E, reduced movement rate used only if unit N tends to provide artillery support in the combat phase. And then all others are quarter. But turn one, uh, special rule, Germans can only use, it's one movement point per hex on the road. 
Also, in the first turn, uh, the Germans get a minus one on combat rolls to represent surprise, which is good. Also, allied units cannot do final defensive final protective fire, and which is uh, they get to place that normally as artillery support. Also, the artillery units, I believe, can't move. On turn one, let's see if that's true. And let's see here. The first SS and twelfth SS can't move. Uh, what does it say? So the plain turn campaign, the regiments of the first may not enter. Oh, they can't. They can move. They can't enter the zone of control of an Allied combat unit. So there again, you can move. These are were reserves by Hitler, um, and they are right here. And they can move. They just can't enter Zoc. They can try to count on the infantry to get a breakthrough. Um, and then also, Allied Corps artillery may neither move nor provide fire support. on the first turn. So, that being said, and there's a little note here, it says, if um, a German unit is able to advance adjacent to the U.S. 333rd Artillery Regiment, uh, it can actually move and provide fire support. So the 333rd is, I gotta admit, I need my magnifying glass. That hex. Needs to be sure it's close. No, not that hex. Oh, it's this guy here, right here, I bet. Like you said, I haven't played this in 40 years, so. Play will be far from ideal. So, the optional rules I, I'm choosing to use. The advanced game introduces uh, tactical air, strategic air, which I'll cover when we get there. Um, we're going to be using some of the optional rules. Uh, you know, and the advanced rules introduce bridge construction, which the Germans can build up to nine. Um, bridge demolition, basically, when a unit comes within three. Um, or in the engineering phase, if there's an enemy in three, you can roll to blow bridges. You can also build units, which takes a whole turn. Uh, fort construction and improved positions, which there's a fort over here. To start VV33. Let's try to. Uh, here you go, right here. Basically doubles the. Um, Combat factor, which let's see here. And a player may build a fort. Does it double? Let's see. Same advantage as permanent forts. And permanent forts, what do they do? It's a good. Uh, I read through the uh, so fortified town. Uh, there's six of them: Clerf, Denant, Namur, and the three liege hexes. Uh, so if they're adjacent, they're not units aren't forced to attack out of. Normally, if you're in a Zoc, you have to do combat. Okay, so basically they make it so you don't have to attack out of it. That's what a fort does. And then an improved position, uh, which is also an advanced rule. And that is anything outside of a town.
Oh, it adds one to the attacker's die roll is what it does. Okay. Needless to say, the fuel dumps are super important with Stavalot and EE9, along with the lead checks, because it's later on, a little bit later in the game, but basically what's going to happen is uh, German movement will be reduced to two movement points at some point to represent the fuel shortages. So that's a good thing, or, you know, historical. Also, um... Vance rules uh, introduced the Brits reinforcements, the German Blitzkriegs, which can be uh, mechanized class units may attempt to slide past defensive strong points. They do a two to one attack or better. Uh, at least half the attacking units have to be mechanized class. Cannot select it if you're refighting an engagement result, which is part of the combat results, which I'll cover when I get the actual combat. And then use the blitz column on the uh, combat results table. All modifiers still apply. Oh, excuse me, cancer talking. And they have to, uh, per, uh, even if you do a Blitzkrieg, you're still subject to the restrictions of 20.6, advance after combat, which means you have to, uh, you stop and advance as soon as you enter a zone of control, a rough or a dense wood hex, if it's not along the road. Advance into but not through a Zoc. Advancing units have no impact on if you advance somewhere where you get in a position where you're adjacent to a unit that hasn't been attacked yet. And armor units may advance across a river only at a bridge or a town. Otherwise, they cannot advance across the river. Hope that makes sense. Uh, that's the special Butch Creek table, which I'm going to show you right here. Just because it's easier. There you go. Okay. Um... Here's the list of die roll modifiers. I'll go through those when I go through combat. And then the optional rules that I chose to use, I was, at, in my initial video, I said I was going to use them all, but I hadn't looked at the game in 40 years. So with the rules I'm going to use, I'm going to use a couple. And I think they'll, uh, I'm not going to use any of the wild ones, like the SS Panzer uh, Commitment. Which means you could do whatever you want with first and twelfth. I want to try this playthrough with just well, it's, but what I would consider as historical as possible. Uh, we're going to use the armor attack restrictions, which are actually going to be anti-German, of course. But basically, an attack into a woods, um, a dense woods hex, a, a, attack at half strength. Armor and mech already have the restriction where they can't even enter these dense woods hexes except along a road. So this gives it even more of a penalty. Uh, you go at half strength. We're going to use last minute demolition for bridges, which means as long as the allied player or the German player doesn't try the engineering phase of an enemy unit moves adjacent, you roll a dice, and on a one, the bridge or the fuel dump, actually, which is later on, is blown. We're also going to use the optional uh, von der Heit airdrop, which will probably be no effect, but basically lands here in this hex here. Oops. Over here, there's a little hex marked for the paratroop. Where is it? Let's see if I can get in the picture right here. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. And basically, you roll a die. If they roll a one, they land successfully. 
They come in on, I believe, the 17 a.m. turn. Yeah, correct. And if it's uh, occupied, allied occupied, then you're allowed to land an adjacent hex. If you roll a two through six, that ends the uh, ends the um, you know it's eliminated, right? The other optional rule I'm using is the uh, which I don't think you can see quite because it's off map. I'm gonna part of von der Heide, or not Krasenzi's, uh special forces. Let me. Well, anyways, it's a seven. For a uh, mechanized armored brigade, which used some, you may, if you know the history, they used some American equipment to slip through the lines. Uh, basically, I get to wait till at the end of my combat phase, I roll one die. If I roll one, they can kind of take off down the road. And uh, there are some limitations of like which road they need to stay on or west of, which is, let's see, Operation Greece, 150th Panzer Brigade. At the end of the combat, German combat phase is 16 a.m. You roll a die, you roll a one. They're released, uh, two through six. They can't do anything till the next turn and they just become a regular unit. Now you are allowed the option of just using as a regular unit from the get-go. But hey, it's Battle of the Bulls. I'm going to gamble. And they have to stay. On the road that runs XX12. To UU12. I believe it's this road right here. runs like this. They basically need to stay there or west of there. If they get lucky and roll a one, that's a big if, right? I'm also going to uh, be using the Operation Grief, which are the commandos, which are, uh, come in the 16 p.m. turn. And those are the companies, the guys that were redirecting traffic and whatnot. And we'll go over the rules for that once they enter play. And then we're also going to do German Core Integrity. One thing that is interesting, now granted, my old eyes, I gotta use this magnifying glass, but each unit's labeled in the upper left corner with a letter. You got A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, but if you, if you attack with anybody more than what's in that core, you suffer a plus one DRM to the combat results table. Anyways, I'm really excited to get this rolling. I hope to do, uh, let me show you the sequence of play again, really quick. And I, oh, what's really kind of nifty, let's see if I can get in the picture here. So at the top of your screen here, let's make an adjustment. At right here, turn record chart, you can't really see a lot of it. But what's neat, it has the notes on it for each turn, the ground condition, which affects movement which I will show you right here. All your charts are in the rule book, by the way. So, so basically, there's your movement with notes. And hopefully, let me stand up. Sorry, guys. My feet are so swollen. I was trying to do this without standing. But I need to stand because I need to see... If this is in focus. Boy, that's not very good, is it, guys? Sorry about that. Man, that is, why won't it focus? It's weird. Come on. There we go. All right. Now it's focused. That's movement, affects the terrain, and then combat. Sorry about wasting your time with that. So anyways, we're at about 20 minutes. I'm excited to get rolling. Um, so it's going to happen soon. So look for my second video where we'll actually start playing. That might be a little bit longer video, but I do want to try to 
make this replay after action report a little different than my last few or last couple where I can portray some of the excitement of playing a game I haven't played in 40 years. Maybe it'll get you to pull out the old war horse, right? And uh, we'll go from there. Have a great evening. Thanks, everybody.